Cool, Stanley, with one of the, the brightest prospects in South African rugby, Sash and Gomez on the back of a very successful under 20 campaign, a URC debut, uh, now used to URC champion. Uh, first of all, Sash, before we talk about the season to come, a bit of a whirlwind few months. Just can you take us through the last three, four months and, and how special it's been to, to rise and, and do so many things so quickly? It's been, it's been remarkable, to say the least. Obviously, went through that SA Rugby Academy camp, um, got the captaincy armband, and then, you know, got my URC debut. You know, I was watching the Stormers throughout the season, not knowing that I'd ever be a part of this season. So once once I got that opportunity, it was it was, a, it was amazing. It's probably three months I couldn't have dreamed of or manifested. But I'm a big manifester, and it's something I couldn't see this coming. So it's been it's been amazing. And I mean, somebody who wasn't maybe a household name four or five months, um, and people already started saying that you know, got sort of spring bug written all over you. How difficult has it been to sort of um, deal with some of the pressure as being somebody who's, who's come through and now captain under twenties and, and has been there as one of the sort of the big names for the future? How are you sort of personally been dealing with that, and how important is it just to to remain calm and try and sort of just take the step slowly and see what comes? It's a yeah, it's a bit cliche, but I don't really like to read too much into the the press and the comments going around. Um, we played the the, the under twenty series, and I played. I didn't play so well in the first two games and and no one was really saying good things then. So all the good things that came after that were just cherry on top. I didn't really look much into it. So like I said, it's been it's been an amazing three months and and I can, I, I've got a bit of pressure on myself to to perform and, and be a part of the uh, a URC title defending team. Um, but yeah, there's no pressure from the outside on me, it's just inside. Yeah, and then going to start the season, somebody who's um, hopefully you're going to be quite a big squad member, um, even though you were a bit in the fringes a year ago. Uh, can you speak about how players at the squad is at the moment? You've got Kade as well there, Mani Liba coming in, Damien Williamson now playing a 10 for the box, has already been playing a 10 for the Stormers. But first of all, how much, how, uh, how much pressure does that put on you to set up in a training? But also how important is it for you to be able to learn from players with different backgrounds, different playing styles and, and different experiences? No, like you said, yeah, it's amazing having, you know, Springbok quality players around. I think Mani himself is a Springbok quality player. Uh, Damien, Kade's one of my close mates. so. Yeah, I don't really see them as competition, more just, uh, you know, guys I can learn from. And, and I know I'm still at a delicate age where I've got a lot to learn before I can start really pushing for, you know, starting number 10 jersey in a title winning team. Um, but, you know, for now, I'll, like well, just what happened in the, in the quarterfinal, I'm, I'm happy to be used anywhere and, you know, gain as much on-field as experience as, as possible for the next, you know, few months. Um, and then and then I'll be I'll be gunning for that 10 jersey after that. Now you mentioned coming back from injury. As, as a young player who, who's now playing at quite a high level, how important is it to you to, to be able to manage sort of uh, the expectations that you might have about playing time? Um, it's important that obviously that you, that you play as much as you can, but you don't want to sort of overplay yourself too young. We have seen you, young players get sort of almost injury prone because they play too much. So how important is it for you to, to manage your own workload and make sure that you look after yourself as you continue to sort of grow? I think it's massively important. Now you've got <clears throat> superstars. Nick Costa um, started too early, injured. Yeah, my, my friend Kate, well, Cade wanted to yeah. just got injured. You know, Kane and Moody broke his jaw in the final. So injuries are a big risk, and they're obviously more, you know, they, they come more often to us younger guys. So, so as long as I can keep my body conditioned, then I put myself in the best, you know, spot possible. But sometimes, you know, injuries are just one of those things. And I just hope it doesn't come, come my way. Cool. And then a bit of a microscope into the Stormers environment. Not a side I don't think too many people are back to go all the way and, and, and win the title. Um, I mean, there were, there were a lot of pressure in the coach start at the beginning of the season, off to a bad start. What sort of is it about the Stormers that they've managed to, to turn things around and, and managed to produce performances where people maybe didn't give them the, the chance? I think <coughs> Dobbo's got it right, you know. There on the TV, you can see the, the boys singing with Ubumba and, and it's small things like that, you know. We play for a bigger community than ourselves. And I think sometimes when you're so focused on a team aspect, you know, you get lost of, of what it really means. I mean, we're just out in George now and seeing what it means to, to the community and things like that. I think that's what gives you that extra drive, adds a bit of fuel to the fire. So, you know, Dobbo really made us aware that our whole theme was, you know, keep Cape Town smiling or make Cape Town smile. And I think, yeah, that was, that was one of the bigger factors, you know, driving our team. And I think that's, that's what took us, you know, that one step forward to where we were before. Bit of an interesting season ahead in terms of scheduling with a couple of games away from the Cape Town Stadium, playing Stellenbosch, uh, playing a game in Nelson Mandela Bay in the Eastern Cape. Um, how much are you looking forward to sort of experiencing those things? And, and how nice is it, as you said, you're going to George, how nice is it to see that your support base is so much bigger than just Cape Town and it is more sort of countrywide? No, it's, it's amazing. And like I said, this George, this George experience is probably one of the most humbling experiences for us as players because, you know, word of mouth really does stretch and support does stretch. So as much as maybe this this... Uh, this run of fixtures in different places might look like a bad thing. I think it's 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 great for people of PE, of Stellenbosch, you know, to to kind of spread the game and spread spread what our team's about. 
And from a personal point of view, what are you hoping to accomplish from the next sort of sort of nine months, nine, ten months of the season? I, I just really want to be in the mix this year. Seriously, in the mix. I want to, I want to push to you know earn a spot in the 23 as often as possible. And when I get a shot, I really want to make the most of it. I want to play for my teammates and and yeah. It's a lot of guys when I first came in, Ruan Noll, um, Damien, Warwick, guys who had my back. Um, and you know, I had belief in me, and I didn't really want to let them down or you know all the coaches. So. Yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in a position where I just, yeah, you know, I want to make people proud at the moment. Uh, you, you're putting pressure on the likes of Moni Balkuz, a title winning fly half. Uh, how much um, are you looking forward to, to be able to, uh, as you said, he's, he's probably spring mock um, quality. Yeah. How looking forward are you being able to, to push somebody like that to that sort of level already and be able to say, uh, you know, if, watch your back because I'm, 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 I'm ready to step in if I need to. Not, not so much in a competitive way, but just being able to push him as far as he can go. Yes. No, I think it's, it's massive and it's, and it's massive for my career going forward to have people in front of me that are really capable of pushing me to the next level. And you don't overtake someone like Amani in a book unless you're on your A game. So I'm just grateful to have someone pushing me to, my, to the next level of my game. Um, and hopefully, you know, I get to that A game. And I, I would, to be honest, I'd like to share the field with him. Um, uh, whether it be at you know 12 or if I'm at 10, he's at 5, whatever, whatever happens. But I'd like to be on the field at the same time as him, um, just because he's driven me to you know get on the field. Speaking on that whole playing different positions, you especially see in the Springboks how the idea of versatility and utility has become so important in the modern rugby player. You know, you you made your debut and you still haven't really played in your favourite position. How difficult and also how um, exciting has it been to be able to show what you can do in different positions and, and sort of not be sort of just pinpointed as just a flower, being able to offer more across the back line? Yeah, I think we saw with, you know, Damon Willemsen in the past, being a, a utility back was seen as maybe a negative thing and maybe get, you know, stuffed around a bit. Um, but yeah, like I said, at my age, wherever I'm playing, I'm happy. And, and you know, coming on at 12, it gives you a different perspective on the game. It makes you appreciate playing 10 more. And, and, it, and it makes sure that, you know, when, you get, when I get that shot at 10, I'm going to try to take it with both hands because that's, that's the jersey I want to own. And then you just mentioned Damon Benz, just in closing, I mean, he's someone who was tipped through, through school and made his Springbok debut uh, very, very young. H how important and how nice is it to have somebody like him who's, who's been there, done that, had sort of the hype at a young age, been able to sort of really kick on? And how much have you learned from him so far in the, in the last sort of year? I've, lear no, I've learned so much. He's really taken me under his wing. And, and, you know, the small things, just being around at practice, watching what the Springboks do after practice, before mm. practice, um, and then watching him pull off man of the match performances for the Springboks, it all the dots align, and and it's been yeah, it's been immense learning. Yeah. People like Kim Warwick, Herschel, uh, even you know the forwards, Salman, Lavrin, you know all those guys really just you know they they put to me up a Springbok. So yeah, like I said, I'm surrounded by you know great players, and, and that's the way to become great. So well, Pepe, thanks so much for your time and speaking on behalf of us, Atkins. Really looking forward to see what uh, we see from you in the coming weeks, uh, season. Thanks, guys. And